Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. Happy to be back with part two of my golf vlog at Poolsville Golf Club. Stay tuned because later in this video I hit probably one of the best shots I've hit all year. It was absolutely insane and um, <laughs> my reaction was uh, pretty crazy. Um, I still can't believe I hit that shot. Also, we're less than a thousand subscribers away from 150,000, which is just a crazy number to me. And you know, when I started YouTube, a little over a year and a half ago, I really never thought I would be getting numbers like this. Um, you know, so I'm really appreciative for you guys' support. And so keep subscribing because once we hit 150K, I'm going to be releasing a special 18 hole video at probably one of the most prestigious golf courses in the country. Um, I'm really excited to put this video together. I know you guys are going to love it. So once we get to that number, I'll be sure to drop that video. So that being said, let's hop into it. So this is the front nine at uh, Poolsville Golf Club. I did play the back nine, um, and I will link the back nine video if you guys want to see that as well. And so that's why you can see kind of already off to already have a certain score on the um, the round. So this is a really long hole considering I think the course on this was like 6,800 yards. Um, so it's pretty crazy that they have a 600 yard hole with a course this short, relatively speaking. So. And one of the biggest reasons I didn't hit driver here is it really does narrow pretty significantly. And honestly, I really just wasn't hitting driver that well today. And um, sometimes when you're just not playing well with a certain club, you know, you just want to put it in the bag and kind of score your way around the course. But uh, I know a lot of people have wanted me to hit driver more often. So that's kind of going forward. I'm going to make sure I hit driver more and um, at least uh, have driver and hit it as a comparison so you guys can see where it is in relation to my other clubs. And again here, I'm just missing these numbers. That would have spun back pretty good. It just got hung up in that rough. That's probably what I'm struggling with most still is kind of getting that distance control down where I, you know, where I feel comfortable. And, you know, it's just, it's a remnant and I guess a symptom from, you know, I've gained a pretty good amount of speed this year, probably two miles an hour, which for me is pretty significant. Um, I set my personal best club speed earlier this year, 155 points. Point. I think it was 0.6 miles an hour. Um, so, and my my on course club speed has gone to about 141 to 142 with the driver. So I'm trying to adjust to those new club speeds. This is a really good shot here. Really never left the flag. Um, and you can see, <laughs> even though it's 210 yards, got a little bit of backspin and definitely a great shot from 210. You can see a pretty long, pretty long uh, hole right there for a par three. So about a 12, 15 footer for birdie. Really would like to make one here to get this round back on track. And you can see just kind of taking my time, looking at trying to eyeball the line. And that I, this is the line I saw. And for whatever reason, it just didn't quite break as much as I wanted it to. And um, I hit the putt I wanted to hit. It had pretty good speed. So sometimes you're just not going to make those putts. Uh, and that's just part of the game. So... Still a good three though. Anytime you make a par and a par three, it's over 200 yards long. You're gonna run. You're gonna take it and run. So, on hole four, really thought this ball was gonna be pretty good, but it just kept sliding left. Got caught by a little bit of wind, and um, the ball was spinning a little bit left, so it exaggerated more. Took a huge hop, and you can see I actually had to put my hat down where the ball was, so I didn't. Uh, so I didn't lose the um, where the ball was. But, uh, yeah, and I, I kind of let this one run a little bit longer. I wanted you guys to see how I kind of get myself ready to hit a shot like this. So the biggest thing here, and you're going to see me push this branch back a little bit. Now, you can't leave it like that because if you hold it back while you hit the shot, it's against the rules. But um, that branch right under my, my head was restricting my ability to kind of see, you can see me peek around. So just so I have a bit of a visual on the ball and then... My big thing here is just to make good contact, which is what I did. I really surprised myself with how well I hit this shot. And I ended up being just a bit short and right. And uh, this was the wrong club here. I should not have hit a 58 degree wedge. I should have hit a 52 and played a bit of a chunk and run. Because this rough is pretty sticky here at Poolsville. And uh, yeah, my club just kind of got stuck and uh, ball just popped out. Didn't really go very far. So I got my look for par here and a little bit of a misread so a bit of a disappointing five um i definitely did put myself in a pretty tough spot uh, off the tee so on to hole five three over for the round give me a three iron here for placement again just trying to get myself around 100 to 120 yards out get myself in good position 
and uh, pull this one left. But the good thing is that uh, these trees do end at a certain point, so you'll see why it was a good thing that I hit it as far as I did. There's a bit of a gap in the trees from probably about 130 out to 70 yards out. And you can see since I'm 91 yards out, um, I was still far enough back where I could hit it over this tree. Had I hit a two iron, I would have definitely not had that option. would have had to run it up. So this is more or less a pretty normal approach shot. I had to definitely elevate the ball a little more than I might normally elevate it, but still a pretty good shot here. And um, you guys will see, was able to hold the green pretty good. Got it all the way back to the pin. Have probably about a 15, 15, 18 footer here. And I have a pretty good beat on this line. Um, I really spent a long time sizing this putt up. I really wanted to make a three. Um, really good stroke here. And yeah, poured it in. And I really like it when I'm playing like this, you know, ramming the ramming the ball into the back of the cup. Just shows a lot of confidence and a lot of aggression. So that was really nice. Got me off to, um, got me going again. So on hole six. Really good tee shot here, a bit of a baby fade. Again, leaving it short of those bunkers. Don't mind having like 160, 170 left. And uh, which is just about what I have. So I got a nine iron. There is a bit of wind in the face, so you can see I'm sawing this one off a little bit. And I'm really trying to improve this, uh, this little shot I have here, because I know it's gonna be very important when I'm playing down in Florida and other windy places. Um, so I'm really trying to improve on that. And, <laughs> That was so bad, um, you know, but can't hit them all good. And notice what I do here, guys. Like, this is how you get better. So I didn't really hit a good shot. And you can actually see I'm really trying. I'm trying to just take some practice. I'm trying to feel what I felt and then feel what I want to be feeling. So I'm kind of just trying to get, like, a, a bit of a correlation there so that I'm, I can kind of use it as a learning experience. So I flared this wide right. And... Uh, so got the 50 degree wedge here. And this is an awesome chip. Hit this to like, I think about two feet, three feet. And um, when I'm out on the course and there's not anyone behind me, I, on pretty much every single hole, I will hit, I'll try to hit about 15 to 20 tri chips around the green. Because honestly, that stuff adds up. You know, like if I play, if I film a lot and I'm, you know, and across and over the course round, I hit two, 300 chips. That's really good practice, you know, and it kind of kills two birds with one stone. You know, because it's tough. Because when you're filming, it's definitely not conducive to really improving because you're trying to shoot a production. Um, so I tried my best to do things around that. But here's the shot I talked about earlier. 210 yards left, but I have a big-time jumping lie here. And so I take a really full swing and have a little bit of a helping win, 210 yards. And um, I'm actually going to stop the recording here because I did a little bit of vlogging in person to capture this moment. Hey guys, I know I'm doing a um, voiceover, but I just wanted to cut in for a second. That was one of the most ridiculous shots I've ever hit. So I had a really, really juicy lie, about 210, I think was the yardage, something like that, and hit a pitching wedge. This almost flew in the hole. I'm walking up to it now. Look at this. Like this almost went into the hole. That's how you make an eagle, baby. Imagine if that flew into the hole. That would have been unbelievable. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know this was, this was um, a commentary, but I thought it'd be good to throw a little bit of a vlog in there because I really wanted to capture how uh, that moment felt because um, I almost made an albatross, which was awesome. Got me back to even on the day. Also, guys, I will be, I'm going to be alternating between vlogging and uh, commentating so that there's something for everybody on this channel. And um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but... The goal is to put out four videos a week, two vlogging, two commentating, and then, you know, if there's, if I hit another 10,000 subscriber benchmark, we'll put out an 18-hole video. And I feel like that's kind of how it's going to go from now on. I, I hope you guys enjoy that format. But a little deep with this bunker shot. Been, wasn't quite familiar with the sand the way I needed to be. So I gave myself about a 15-footer. Try to save my par here. And drifted a bit right on me, so... Gave one of them back, but that's the beauty of making an eagle. You you can still you still have one you kept. So on the hole nine, last hole of the day, one over for the round, and could be hitting a two iron trying to squeeze up the right center of this fairway. And I don't know what it was. I just 
a lot of these bounces were really rough. I think I was just not shaping the ball the way I should have shaped it for the course because, like on hole six, I think got a brutal kick left, and this one just took a massive bound forward and just close enough to that tree to make it an issue. If that was three or four yards back, really no problem. So I had to take my 62 degree wedge here and really try to hoist it over this tree. I had about 90 yards left, and I mean this thing, I had to, look how high I have to send this one up. Just to get it over, and unfortunately didn't have enough punch to it on, uh, on the flight, so got caught in the wind. It was a little bit short right. So, can have this up and down here, try to save par. And um, so I'm gonna try and hit a good shot here with the 58 degree. I hit a really good chip here, and this cozied on up to about two feet, so pretty much gave me myself a guaranteed par. So I'm gonna tap that one in. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, I will see you guys next time.